why don't we put it down since there's not much written? Because then they don't know to take care. They'll know. They got to take care. I know. Take care, 2020. Oh, that's a nice motto. What episode is this, 17? One seven. Okay. Welcome to Greenlight Pod and our, um, you know the things that all the famous podcasters wear? The headphones. Right. The big podcast headphones and the uh, microphones. Ours are busted today. Yeah, I feel nude. Yeah, I feel completely naked and it's weird not to hear my voice in the, um, does your voice annoy the shit out of you? Because my voice annoys the shit out of me. Yes, to the point where it's difficult to listen to these here podcasts. I cannot do it. And somebody says that I keep, I sound exactly like somebody from a television program, I believe Succession. Succession? I'm not familiar with. I don't know that one. Somebody also said that oh, you Jason sound like Garrett. Jason Garrett. Yeah. Not as good, I'm guessing. I don't know. I, there, I don't think, I don't know. Okay, well, I'll this is uh, episode 17. We've come a long way. We have. It feels like about 77. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> 17, 17 only is. comes once in a lifetime. That's right. Yeah. Don't it just fly by wild mm-hmm. and free. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, we got a lot to talk about today in a little time because I have a flight to catch to get down to the Orange Bowl, which our Virginia Cavaliers are playing in against the Florida Gators. Uh, that there is a bowl of oranges. Yeah. I'm going to be on the field on, uh, on the 30th. Flex. Yeah. What kind of... What outfit should I wear? Great question. Um, you usually do something <laughs> not affiliated with your alma mater. You go like Carhartt, dark gray. Yeah. Nike, dark gray. Mm-hmm. A pant, dark black. Gray. <laughs> uh, maybe a dark gray shoe. <laughs> it's slimming. Can you wear some uh, Wahoo gear? Yeah, what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to wear uh, some um, Amazon priming some orange Chuck Taylors. Nice. Probably some khakis. Jean jacket. Of course. <laughs> if I can find my jean jacket before the flight leaves in about three hours. Uh, and then probably a Wahoo hat. Okay. The problem with hats are they don't fit well. Yeah. Well, you wear hats well. I do wear them well, but I need the tall bucket. I can't have the flat hat. And a lot of the, the hats that these colleges are wearing now are flat. So I think... You know, I'll avoid the black, the dark gray. I'll throw in some V-Sabers. I appreciate that. But orange Chuck Taylors. I like it. There's going to okay. be a lot of orange and blue. So I know. It's like, well, how do you differentiate yourself? With some V-Sabers. V-Sabers. There I'm going to be looking like Bronco Mendenhall up in the radio booth. Nice. Head to toe. Nice. I don't know if I'm going orange and He had a suit and yet. an orange hat on yeah. getting on the plane. Yes, he did. I like that. Um, so, did you have a good Christmas, by the way? Yes, I did. Christmas was terrific. I felt awkward as fuck wishing everybody... Well, did you listen to Rosillo Pod? Probably not on Monday. Nah. So, Rosillo signed off as like, and Merry Christmas to all the listeners out there. And I was like, ha, and Merry... Uh. Oh, you can't do it, huh? Well, I, if we're wishing the listeners a Merry Christmas, I think I should just say Happy Holidays, right? Right. I mean, Some we're people are the, doing Hanukkah. We're in the midst of Hanukkah right now. This is the middle of it right now, yeah. right? Wishing all our listeners a happy Hanukkah, and Merry Christmas, or whatever else you choose to, to uh, celebrate these days. I hope you spent time with, with family this week. Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. Thursday. Whatever you're into. Is it thurs- was it Thursday? Yeah. I missed it. Mm. Um, did you get any presents? I did, uh, including this hoodie you're seeing right now. It's a great hoodie. Thanks, man. Tag's still on. Uh, don't tell Nike. <laughs> Just gonna make sure it works. I have a oh, problem. I got this vest. Nice. We both got some Nike cool. swag. Cool. Uh, I have a problem in that um, six four, as you know, which yeah. is a great big Flex. number. Uh, but I have short arms, kind of like a dinosaur. You do. Yeah. So <laughs> this is size medium, and yet no. the sleeve. I swear. You're six foot four and a medium. And the That's sleeves are coming kind of down record. to my knuck to my uh, knuckles. I thought you were about to say something else. <laughs> do, you, do you remember the guy that won the contest last week? We didn't give him anything yet. Not yet. 
Do you remember his name? Can you find that while I Hal. ramble at some point? Hal. I it was think. Hal. So congratulations to Hal for guessing making Gunner's weight. Yeah. You were right on it at 136 pounds and. 172.4 was the right answer. He came in at 172.35 or something crazy. Now, I crazy thought about sending accurate. Hal uh, some St. Louis gear, but you know a lot of those fans don't want any Rams gear. So, Hal, why don't you hit us up and let, let us know what you want reasonably. <laughs> right. Um, something that, one, one thing on Christmas that I was thinking about a lot this week. How weekend, was your Christmas? It was great. Thanks for asking. Yeah. I was cliffhanging there waiting for you to ask me how my Christmas was. Um, a lot happened on Christmas. Uh, kids save their best performances for Christmas. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to grade out low and you're a kid, just grade out low on Christmas. Because what are you going to do? You're not going to be like, by the way, this vest is bothering me. For those of y'all watching on YouTube, it's a great vest, but vests can be kind of awkward if you do the... Weren't you just told not to mess with your vest because of your mic? Yeah, but I think we're good, right? We're still good, guys? Yeah, we're still good. Um... By the way, vest season is a great thing for plus size dudes. We love vest season. Yeah. What's the what's minus size dudes? For minus size dudes, I also uh, took home a vest in my haul. So nice. Well, that I'll can report help. Back. Barber vest? Nah. Surprising. Padded Padagucci is that Patagucci. what we say? Padagucci. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, kids they always save their worst for Christmas, and like I pride myself in being a very what I tell you is what's going to happen parent, and when I tell Waylon, that he's not, you know, if he keeps acting up, he's not going to get his presents in the morning, and he keeps acting up, he basically calls my bluff. What am I going to do? Like, he's going to come down Christmas morning with no presents, um, which would be the right thing to do. How many presents is appropriate for a kid? Ten? Yeah. Ten in a Christmas? Is that kind of... Yeah. Okay. It's a great Christmas. Let the listeners pitch in. I have this idea that we're going to try to... We're going to try to do, you get 10 toys for Christmas. I'm sure a lot of people do this. You give away 10 toys. Nice. I think that's probably the way to go. Yeah. I think Christmas, uh, it can be a little bit ridiculous, but I still love Christmas. Um, one thing that made me very happy this week was I saw my buddy Timmy Jernigan uh, perfecting my dance that I used to do when I used to play the football. <laughs> Hey, hey. <laughs> that's he low. He looks good. He looks good, man. He looks like he looks like he's been working on it. He looks like he can bust that out. If you get a sack this weekend, Timmy, I expect to see that dance. Is that supposed to be a Joel? Yeah, it's kind of a Joel, but it's like a later. It's a later career Joel. It's we a, call that dance a Joel. It's a Brit. It's a hybrid Joel. The Joel is kind of like something from, what's the movie with, uh, with John Travolta in the 70s? Blues Brothers? No. The fucking one where he's, what's the one in the, back in the day, guys? Yeah. No, the one where he's got a leather jacket on. Grease, bro. Grease. I thought it was Grease, Lightning, Grease, whatever. I had Grease a millisecond after you said John Tra, and I just wanted I, I to let you. I feel like he danced like this at some point, and that's kind of the Joel. Was that in... Was that Pulp Fiction? Did he dance in Pulp, Pulp Fiction? I think it's Grease. It's kind of Ch John Travolta meets Ric Flair. And Timmy, I'm giving that an 11 out of 10. You added the rhythm to that dance. and uh, Make it your own, Timmy. Timmy, you, you did your thing, man. One of my favorite teammates of all time, Timmy Jernigan. Uh, by the way, the Eagles are dancing because they win this Sunday against your New York Giants. And they're in. What a bummer. The G-Men beating the hapless Washington team, falling out of the Chase Young oh sweepstakes. God. Teams can't get it right. And now they're probably going to go nuts and get to 5-11, and 11, knock out your beloved Eagles. That, that's the thing about that game, and we'll get to that maybe in a little bit, but you have to worry about the Giants. Listen, two years ago when we had Nick Foles late in the year and uh, everybody remembers the run we went on, we lost, or we, we, it felt like a loss. We beat them 31-29. We were down late. We needed a lot of stuff to happen for us to win that game. And uh, the Giants got Saquon looking healthy now, right in time to further push themselves out of whatever sweepstakes they're trying to be in. Well, and they're trying to grow Danny Dimes. Yes. And so what do you the do? players seem to like Coach Shermer, so yes. they're playing for him. And yep. football is a sport where you can't really go 50%. You can't. 
It's it's really hard to do. You could tell me the Bengals are tanking this weekend. Don't tell the players that. Right. And they got to play. They're locked into the number one pick, so they're going to beat the Brownies. And most of the guys on bad teams, and here's the thing about tanking, guys on bad teams might not be there anyway next year. Right. Bad rosters are made up of a lot of guys who are coming and going. So if the front office wants to tank, good luck telling that to the coaches who are playing for their jobs. Good luck telling that to the players who are auditioning for jobs. It's just not going to happen. Um, saw some bowl games the last couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, you wanted to take it away on Louisiana Tech Miami because I saw 14 nothing. I didn't see it, a, a single second of that game. Okay. Uh, there were 18 punts. That's like... 18's a big number. That's a lot. Um, yeah, we had talked about the walk-ons, which is a bistro, by the way. We found out. Bistro and bar. Bistro spelled B-I-S-T-R-E-A-U-X. Yeah. Oh, it's a southern bistro. Right. Um, the Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana. A lot of tight shots of the field because they didn't want to show. No cityscape. All, well, they, and they didn't want to show just bleachers. Yeah, yeah. Just rows and rows but of bleachers. But what do you do? Do you do when, when you come out of commercial, is that one of the cities you just show like an ambiguous fountain? Yeah. I'm not familiar with Shreveport. Maybe it's sure, delightful. It's a nice place. Uh, 14 nothing. I mean, nothing really worked. Um, La Tech was up 7 nothing late. Quarterback busts a run down to the 10 and goes down under two minutes to run out the clock. Great decision. Yeah, great decision. About a minute 50 to go. And then on the next play, he runs it in (laughs) (laughs) to give Miami the ball back with the shot. The only chance they had to get the ball back. That was it. 14 nothing. Um, A Holtz, a Lou Holtz offspring coaches La Tech. Oh, yeah. Um, Yeah. Really? The U finishes six and seven. Blake James, the Miami AD, puts out uh, a tweet. Uh, a night or two ago saying how committed he is to now coach Diaz, which is almost a carbon copy of the tweet he's saying he, uh, he wrote last year, saying how committed he was to Coach Rick and the future of the program, et cetera. Uh, go check out Blake Boy, James at, like at Kane's time. All Access. I know, Mark Rick. Jeez. Uh, now he's just Joe Cool on TV. Right. Is he not the coolest guy on TV? He is a cool guy. Blood pressure not exceeding, or he is heart a cool rate guy. not exceeding 50 while he's on that show. When I went to go find those tweets that you can read on, uh, you can read on, you can read on the YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. Um, just typing in Blake James, you can see a lot of uh, the U Nation unhappy with their guy, Blake <laughs> James, uh, for, for the Canes going six and seven. Um, who's took an L to the Canes this year? which doesn't look so hot in retrospect. Um, yeah, I told you I watched the Independence Bowl, and by that I meant I saw what was going down with about six minutes left, Yep, 7 nothing. Got you. I had an errand, paused it to really watch how bad it was. Right. Um, there was a 4th and 40, Right. which you don't see every day. 4th and 40. Yeah. They suck. The second game was really good. Now, by the way, my little two cents, Four and five stars, I read this. Miami has 33. Mm. La Tech has one. By the way, let me say this about the uniforms. Really nice uniforms. The combination there. Louisiana Tech, not only is the state of Louisiana shaped like an L, but their logo and the first letter, it all works nicely together. You ever think about that? Actually, yeah. You have thought about that. Well, yeah. Okay. And they put a big T on top of the... It's nice. Yeah. It's a nice logo. It's a nice red and blue. It goes great. Miami's uniforms were great. They could update the font, maybe. They played outside, which is always nice. Uh, You know, the second game was indoor, but I really enjoyed those uniforms. Eastern Michigan, I know you probably have a take on this. For a school with a budget uniform, they didn't do a bad job. Now, I was curious as to whether the pants were white or gray. It got a little bit boring to me below the belt. I don't know how else to say that. <laughs> I mean, Every, well, the, the pants the white were pants, white. They, the white pants were the pants that like, they gave you in CAYFL. Right. Like in Pee Wee football. Right. Which, where you, you got your hip pads that tie into the girdle, which ties into the belt. Like, that's the pants those cats were wearing because they ran out of money up top because they had nice uniforms, you know, the, the, the jerseys and the helmets. 
I, I couldn't tell if the pants were white or gray. They were white. Okay. But they had the gray numbers, the gray E on the helmet, which maybe goes gray with... pants. They were white. Their, their pants but were white, It should have been gray pants. Okay. Do you yeah. agree? Yeah, probably so. Nice uni. Um, is the gray because of the, the cinder blocks that they knocked over? I'm not sure. Running into Ford Field? I'm also not sure about the, uh, the mechanic short sleeve button downs mm. that these coaches were donning. Yeah. Which reminded me of my college career when Al Grow used to have people that were in the, uh, you had to earn your Joe shirt. It was an average Joe shirt. So like everybody was a Joe. So we had these blue mechanic short sleeve button downs with, uh, with an iron on Joe. Like, so you didn't have a name. But if you, if you didn't earn the shirt, you wore, you wore these shirts that said like, I need to pick it up. They were pink shirts that said, I need to pick it up. Wow. I don't think, I don't know how that would go over in 2019. Yeah, salt on the color pink. Yeah. We can't do that. Mm -mm. Um, also, that, that head coach for, uh, for Eastern Michigan is Clem Killy. Oh, nice. It was okay in my book. Um, game could have been outdoors, but I love the uniforms. Uh, you know, Pitt's uniforms that they donned in that game are elite. They are. You don't like the numbers? Yeah, how do you know that? Because you didn't like the Pelicans numbers. I texted you about the Pelicans numbers the other night. They kind of have that little bit of flair mid number. You didn't like that either. It's just, it's on the line of trying too hard. I Got like you. that it's culturally appropriate, looks good for a New Orleans club. Yep. Pitt, I'm sure those numbers, that font, I'm sure their campus has windows with windows that are they what? come to an apex yes gothic gothic what? okay yes. nice Look they got us. some gothic numbers they probably do but yeah the uh the colors the script pit hard to beat so with that so with that game i ask you this is that the worst combination going from pittsburgh to detroit for a bowl game i mean miami's going to shreveport which sucks but at least you live in miami like and Pittsburgh, I'm not shitting on Pittsburgh, but it's a blue-collar town. And they went to the most blue-collar bowl, which, by the way, we predicted would be, would be testy. And mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. Many people got slapped in the face. That's right. Including an official. Can we, can we roll that? My man, uh, Mike Glass, that's his name, right? Mike Glass? The quarterback, yeah. Of, uh, there are 2,000 on the point, now, one on Here he is. Team. He's slapping everybody. On no, Eastern yep. Michigan. Number nine. And then he slaps the ref. He barely hit conduct. the ref. He hit his hat. He, he hit the hat. Yeah. It was as if the ref made a conscious decision. That's a conscious decision you make, which I'm going to fall down. My legs are going to go limp, and yeah. I'm going to fall down. As if you don't realize, of all people, that you have slow-mo everywhere. Right. He still got the flag out. He <laughs> got the flag out. But his person was not touched. No. Yeah. And there was a dude, and, and by the way, Mike Glass, who had a great, great career. Um, of Hazelwood Central in St. Louis, and I saw them play. I went and watched them play in the state championship. Shout out to Mike Glass, but his, his career ended uh, with, an, with ejection. an ejection, which yeah. just totally blows. Um, uh, you don't think so? I don't know. Kind of an interesting way to go out. I mean, you might as well, rather than a Hail Mary from the 50 in the, uh, in the quick lane bowl, yeah. just go out with a bang. Yeah, I got, it's not like they can suspend you next year. I got tossed from the Conway Convocation Center once upon a time. For, did you? Yeah, I was being too boisterous. Oh, yeah, you did get tossed. Cheering on the Saints. You did get tossed and in it's high school. And it's a memory I have that I cherish. You do cherish perhaps it. Perhaps the same for Mike Glass. I've actually, I hadn't thought about that in quite some time, but um, the corner, I guess it was, for Eastern Michigan also got tossed for spitting in, in dude's face. Yeah. It's a bad look. Yeah, don't spit. Um, don't don't want to spit. It was a, it was a brutal beat for me because I teased um, I teased Pitt or I teased uh, yeah I teased Pitt down to seven points, bought the half point on top of teasing it, and took the uh, the under down to like forty four, which it hit easily. I should have just took the over. Uh, I teased the over down to forty four, so over hit easy, and then the last drive you're in the worst position you could be in, which is that you're rooting for um, a field goal. They were down three, and then overtime. It's the only way I can win. Yeah. And, of course, this dude, they haven't led for 59 minutes. They take the lead on a one-handed catch. Great game for Pitt. Uh, Pat Narduzzi with his first bowl win. And if you talk to the guys that went to Pitt, they really like him. So uh, solid program, very fitting bowl game for them to be in. Very scrappy, very testy. 
Um, but a good day of college football because Miami loses. You can laugh at them. And then a really entertaining game that you never expected to be entertaining late. I mean, the line was 14. Yeah. So, um, also, I want, to, I want to slide this video in here for people out there listening. Can we, can we roll the, the Jeff Fisher video? My old coach, Jeff Fisher, he's really active on Twitter, but he says, I'm still coaching. This is him coaching. Stay. Loves wearing, dogs. Wearing the sandals. Stay. He's got all the dogs from that. Look at him. Yeah, jeans and sandals. That's a, that's the Jeff Fisher move. He's got three golden retrievers. They're all eating. Very disciplined football team he has there in Be- his garage. Beautiful. Beautiful. So shout out to Jeff Fisher. He's still coaching. He's got a great sense of humor. And he's taking social media by storm a little bit. I didn't know that. Let me, uh, let me get on that train right now. Yeah, get on the Jeff Fisher train on, uh, on Twitter. He's very engaging. He loves gifts. Um, it's kind of cool because after all these years, I think people get to see that Jeff Fisher is not just a football coach, he's a super cool guy. Because um, he was, he was kind of the, seemed like the silent type for most of his career, wouldn't, wouldn't you say? I guess so. Yeah, if you had to guess his personality watching games. Yeah, I guess I don't take much away. Maybe lack of personality. Yeah, exactly. Right. Got a huge personality. Uh, a week ago, I was asked to rank five Stone songs. I want to hit that real quick, which is, I can't believe I'm just glossing over this. My top five Stone songs right now. I needed time. Um, I can't, maybe Moonlight Miles, my first. By the way, do you like the Stones? Kind of. You can't kind of like the Stones. No, that's a fair answer. Yeah. Ask me again. Do you like the Stones? Oof. I don't know. <laughs> sort of? I, yeah. I got Moonlight I Mile at one. Oof. How many Stone songs can you name? Not to put you on the spot. Uh, I would put the over under at seven. Seven? Yeah. Let's play. Okay. I don't know if these are songs, though. You're going to have to tell me. I can't get no satisfaction. Yep. Is that a stone song? Yep. Um, give me shelter. Yep. Paint it black. Yep. Well, I think it's just called black. Is it just called black or is it called paint it black? Doesn't matter. Wild horses. Song. Yep. You you got a s eating grin. I don't know if no, I'm, I'm being just, played we're, here. We're close to seven here. Um, uh, jumping Jack Flash. Yeah. Huh. Fucking hate that song, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have I said give me shelter? Yeah, it's, it's on my list of top five. Oh, um, Beast of Burden? Beast of Burden. That's a good one. I think I got to seven. Yeah, you got to seven. Nice yeah, work. Thank you. Who said you don't listen to music? No one said that. You, you said that. Okay. Uh, number one, I got Moonlight Mile. Uh, maybe number two is give me shelter. Although it's been played so much and it's iconic, the backstory of that song is amazing. You know, these guys were fighting. They would just record. They'd go home. Uh, somebody wrote that song coming down off like a heroin binge. Mm. Uh, they had some gospel singer come in and do the hook uh, or the, the background singing, which is just amazing. And supposedly, now this is a fucked up thing, but they called her in at like all hours of the night, like two, three in the morning to come sing because they were just impulsive and they just wanted to record. And this woman... She sang, I don't know if it was just how intensely she was singing, but she had a miscarriage. Wow. Um, so there was like a huge, she had a miscarriage on the way back from the studio. So this is a really dark song in the way it was recorded, how it was written. Uh, rock and roll history, little rock and roll history for you there. I could be wrong on three-fifths of that, so I'm sure I'll be fact check online. Um, I like Gimme Shelter. I like Heaven, which is a really unorthodox one, but it's one of my favorites. Wild Horses, that's up there for me. Uh, Waiting on a Friend is fringy for me. It's, it's a good mood song. Um, you also named Beast of Burden, which is terrific. And I like Do-Do-Do-Do-Do. That's a song? Yep. It is, I promise. Start Me Up. Start Me Up, Eight. which is not one of my favorites. Uh, what I'm listening to this week, I'm listening to a lot of Wood Brothers. For those of you who don't listen to Wood Brothers, uh, uh, is it Cowboy Reed. Is Saturday show already? I need to figure out what I'm listening to. Sorry. Chris. Yeah, figure it out. Um, Wood Brothers, and I'm on a big Blind Melon kick again. Blind Melon got pigeonholed off of their one hit. Their one biggest hit. Obviously, 
like many icons um, from that time period. Gone too soon. A lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of front men uh, in that era. Lives lost way early. Um, Hoon was an icon, and they had so much rain range. It wasn't, it wasn't just uh, like what you heard when you listened to No Rain on the, on the radio. There was a lot of good stuff there. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on music. You want to get right into the mailbag, and then we just got a bunch of football. Sugar Sugar by the Archies is my last downloaded song. Sugar Sugar by the Archies. I don't know that one. Yeah, you do. I do? Oh. Sugar Sugar. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bow, 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 Jesus. Bow. God, I don't... I think Purgatory for me would be, tra- be, be being trapped inside of your iPod yeah. classic. <laughs> yep. I'm pretty sure you have an iPod classic. Uh, I do. I don't listen to it, but I kept you it. You still have it. Yeah. Why? Uh, 50 years from now, it's going to be like, hey... Remember this? Holy shit. A lot oh. of marching band music. Yeah, which is also disturbing. Yeah, let's do mailbag. Yeah, let's do mailbag. Chuck Sweeney asks, what is the weirdest thing you saw in a locker room? So one time, Chuck, I saw a, uh, I saw a fight in the locker room. And I saw many fights in the locker room. But this one I saw where a guy poured water on a guy doing his business in the stall mm. as a prank uh, to a lineman. Evidently, the old lineman on the, uh, on the porcelain was having a bad day. Cold water. Cutting a turd. Eesh. Yeah, mid-turd. Ah. Gets up. Toilet paper hanging out of his you-know-what. And he's chasing the other big guy. So you got two fat guys chasing after each. One fat guy chasing <laughs> after another one with toilet paper in his ass. Into the training room. God knows what else is on his hands. He's trying to attack other said fat guy. And, I mean, you got people that don't want to break this up because they don't want to get any dookie on them. You've got people laughing. You have people frightened. I saw that. Um, I also saw in the same locker room a trainer. We put out a, um, he said, I want to make $1,500 for, for Christmas because we were paying people to do crazy shit. It was like truth or dare with money because um, these trainers, they don't get paid enough. Some of them. Um, and he said, I want to raise $1,500. I have an idea, you know, like, I don't know if he volunteered this or who volunteered it, but we're going to collect toenails. Because <laughs> so in every training room, there's a, you know, like in the sterilization bucket where there's like that blue liquid, there's, you know, um, toenail cutters, cuticle scissors, nail files. And then after you're done, you put it in the dirty pile and then they sterilize and bring it back. So... You know, a lot, of, a lot of guys have ingrown nails and stuff, and it's hard in the cleats, so you, you have to maintain. Um, and some guys have claws, because you get stepped on a lot. Disgusting, disgusting dogs. Like, disgusting black toenails. Just, you know, bruised, and they never go away. I don't know if you ever had one like this from maybe a Thanksgiving football game, or getting nah. stepped on, or closing the door to the, your office. I find court. myself in some University of Virginia uh, locker rooms. Yeah. And for a few reasons, it's just um, eyes up. Yeah. Uh, eye yeah. level. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of those reasons being there's some nasty feet. Some nasty dogs. So dudes were piling their, their toenail clippings up in a Dixie cup for three days. Homeboy ate it for $1,500. Oh, my gosh. Disgusting. Disgusting. But... Oh, it's the best, uh, it's the best money he made all year. The easiest money, the quickest money he made all year. <laughs> it's better than tape and ankle. It's not better than tape and ankles for an entire calendar year. Wow. Uh, but yeah, he, he, uh, he volunteered that. So, uh, next. Marty Marr asks, who's your favorite football player besides family? Man, you know, I got a few, I guess I would say Barry Sanders. That's my favorite running back of all time. Um, I loved everything about him. And I love the way he walked away from the game early. That was kind of cool, the mystique of that. You know, you can't, you just, for me, he's number one. You can't touch him. You know, number two for me is, is sweetness. And I love sweetness, but um, Barry was my favorite. Uh, you know, underrated raw power. Iconic cuts, but the power was there too. And my dad, when you ask him who was the best running back he ever played against, was Barry. Um, Jack Youngblood's a favorite. 
because he was a Rams, you know, iconic rusher, and then he was really cool to me um, while I was there. I was a Panthers fan growing up, so I had a bunch of Panthers I was I was into. Um, the next question, listeners, I too am shocked he didn't say Carson Wentz. Uh. And my answer, uh, <laughs> my answer is Charles Woodson in the non non UVA division. Nice, yeah. Uh, who's the one that got away, Chris? Well, the guy's asking who I never got the sack that I wish I had sacked. And obviously, for me, it's Tom Brady. I have two sacks against the Patriots that I had my second year in the league. Uh, we played the Pats, the Matt Castle Pats, and I sacked him twice. Um, in London, didn't get to him. We were down, I mean, we lost 44-7. So, uh, And then the Super Bowl, one of the plays I most regret. There's no regret, but... Very close to stripping him on the goal line on fourth. Fourth and like eight, he hit Amendola. Do you remember that play? No. They were backed up against the goal line. This is post-BG strip sack. They had to drive the length of the field for a touchdown and two point. Okay. And I wanted that walk off so bad. Like, my finger damn near hit the ball. And I'll always wish I, I sacked Tom Brady. I mean, like, that for me, to the day I die, is something that is going to stick with me. Who's your favorite teammate? Uh, it's tough. That's a tough call. I mean, William Hayes is up there. Anybody who's in St. Louis knows William Hayes. Uh, you know, there's guys like Fletcher Cox, who I really enjoyed playing with late in my career, Bo Allen, but there's too many to name. Okay. Mine's Sam the Ram Bradford. Nice. Of yours. Yeah. Uh, high school coach. Is yeah. that just asking who your high school coach was? Uh, he was asking if I'm still tight with my high school coach. Okay. So shout out to John Blake. Okay. Yes, I am still tight with John Blake. We talk occasionally. Uh, Tucker Johnson asks, how concerned are you about feedback loops, tipping points, and climate change? Well, that got heavy. Uh, you know, high school coach to climate change. Yeah, I'm fucking concerned about climate change. Guess what I do? I listen to, I listen to the scientists. It's a novel concept. You know, like you listen to the people who are really smart. And I got a chance to meet Paul Nicklin recently. Brilliant Nat Geo photographer. And one of the coolest fucking guys I've ever met. Uh, really cool. And I asked him, like, what's the skinny on this thing? Like, what's, cause you know it's real, but are there exaggerations? Or, like, you know, cause for all we know, if you didn't listen to science, if you were selective about how you listen to science, uh, you might think it's exaggerated. It is not exaggerated. And I trust Paul Nicklin. So I trust Paul Nicklin over the guy on the internet with a red hat. NFL Butt Patrol asks. That's a good one. What's Macon's take on the squatty potty? Well, uh, good question. Um, I once owned one. Yeah. And um, golly, I never thought I'd be talking about such things. I'm. Uh, well, you've talked about such things, just not on the air. Right. I'm I'm pretty regular, and I didn't need the uh, enhancement. Hmm. In fact, I didn't think it did much for me. Um, if anything, it made my experience oh, more my uncomfortable. Um, really? Yeah. Love the squatty potty. <laughs> it. Yeah, we I'm don't good have without. to talk anymore about it. RJ Hamill asks, which NHL players could play in the NFL? Pat Maroon. You might want to take that away from your mic. That's Chris playing with his water bottle. Oh, my water bottle? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, Got to stay hydrated. Going to do a lot of drinking this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I would, say, uh, I, I would say Pat Maroon. That guy's fucking huge. Buddy of mine, obviously iconic player on that St. Louis Blues run. The cup last year, now he's in Tampa. He's about 260. I think he'd be a fullback, a run stuffing DN. He's also got an attitude. Wesley Paul asks Did your youth dictate your pass rush, or did age evolve the moves for the better? A little bit of both. Um, you know, you have different coaches that coach different things, and as a young player, you're like, I have to listen to my coaches. So sometimes you, one mistake coaches make especially D-line coaches, is they try to, you know, tailor their coaching points to what they know and not what the player can do and, like, playing the player's strength. So when I got in the league, 
I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I came from a 3-4. So I was like playing for people who are listening at home. Like I was doing J.J. Watt stuff. So I didn't get a ton of just edge rushes. Now he gets a ton of edge rushes because he's really good at it. But I was an unpolished J.J. Watt in college. So I was pretty good rushing the edge. But, you know, what I did is I, I, I rushed inside a lot in a four eye, which is inside eye tackle. This was a big adjustment for me. And when I got in the league, I needed a vet to tell me, give me a cue to help me turn the corner. And for me, that was a swipe. So two hand swipe early when I had the speed and I had a lot of quickness. Um, and then late in your career, you know, when I was young, I had a killer inside move because everything came off of speed. People were afraid of you getting to the corner. As you get older, a couple of injuries, age, you have to start getting the edge based on power. So like then, late in my career, I still had a good jump because I knew that, you know, I timed the snap count. I watch, I'd watch the play clock in the end zone. Like, so smart rushers, they'll cue in on things like language from the quarterback, snap counts, you know, center moving the ball hand. I'd be standing up on third down. The reason I stood up on third down was I could see the quarterback, I could see the center. By the way, First thing you do when you come out of your stance mostly is just stand up anyways if you're at all stiff which i'm a little stiff then i could see the play clock as well and that's one thing people don't see a lot is some young young rushers are not seeing the whole picture so late in my career i had to i had to use that stuff to get the edge but for me late it was more power bull jerk which is like you get somebody on their heels and then when they set their anchor you pull them down and get by them so early in your career everything's based off speed Late in your career, everything's based off power. That's the way I rushed. A lot of people rush like that. If you saw a play clock at three, two, one, are you waiting to beat and going no matter what? I'm pretty much going. At least I'm gonna know that if they're on silent count, if the second head bob is at four, the third one, the snap's coming. So like for me, that would be a little trick that sometimes would steal your rush. I know when I was little, um, yeah. my dad taught me dip and bend. Yeah. And then as I got older, it was more, as you were saying, swipe and rip. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The little it's a good coaching point. Maybe bro Tob, maybe whoever yeah. asks, who is the most respectful player you faced? Uh, Andrew Luck is as advertised. I mean, he really would say like great hit. I mean, that wasn't a, a show. Not that anybody doesn't believe him. Uh, Fitzgerald. Yeah, great guy. Paul Rodriguez asks, does the constant barrage of Philly fans like me begging you to come back bother you, or does it make you feel proud? Uh, it makes me feel... Listen, it's great to know that you have a home and people love you somewhere, because that, like, that means everything to me. It means more than, you know... I mean, the money certainly means a lot that you make in your career. The Super Bowls make, mean a lot, but... To have a home that you can always come back to, at least to watch a game and people love you. I talk about it all the time. It's awesome. But the only thing that would annoy me about that was people got the, you know, baked into their, hey, come back. We miss your leadership. Like, no, like, to me, the reason I stepped away is because I thought I had production left to give, not because I'm a player coach. So, or, you know, hey, Chris, like, they had, they basically, a lot of people get the, the sequencing or how it went down at the end wrong. And for me, you know, that was what bothered me. Like, it, it would be things like, um, hey, Joe Osman got hurt. Got to come back now. I'm like, that's not why I retired. Joe Osman is not why I retired. So, they're, they're, you know, what, what it would annoy me is people not paying attention enough to what is really going on. Yeah. Just how bad do you want me back if you don't know what's going on? Yeah. Marshawn's coming back. Yeah. Let, let's say you pass a drug test. How long would it take you to get back? 10 days. 10 days. Can't do it, though. Why not? I'm on reserve retire. I was on it too long. But next year? Could come back next year. That cap, that maybe, cap is creeping up. Maybe week 10 next year. It'd be week one next year. I'm not, I wouldn't do that whole thing. Okay. Uh, Wendy. Really should figure out how to pronounce this. Yeah, he's had a couple good questions. N-D-E. Asks, did you or a teammate have coaches that bench you the last week with a bonus? Um, looming. I haven't I had that happen. I've heard bonus of it. Bonus looming. Yeah, I've, 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 I've heard of that happening. It hasn't happened to me. In fact, when I was in New England, I had like a 65% of snaps um, thingy. And I was going to make a bunch more money. Not a bunch, but like for me in that contract, I was. Um, 
And I thought going into week 17 for sure, and this was a game that was like sort of, everything was locked up, but we still had to play it out. I thought, you know, I would be taken off the field and not get as many snaps I normally would. And uh, I got a ton of snaps that day. So I know Bill pays attention to all that stuff, and I'll always appreciate, you know, not dicking me on that. I mean, that money, I earned it, and, uh, and they gave it to me. So I've never had it happen to me in a bad way. Ernie was probably up there just counting snaps. Ernie was up there counting snaps, but Bill... I mean, Ernie was my guy, too. I really loved Ernie. One time I saw Ernie get hit with a football so fucking hard, I thought he was dead. <laughs> and he got up. He just got up with like a road rash on his head. Nicole Woody, shout out to Nicole Woody, Chris Long Foundation. She, She's calling him right saving now. Saving the world never sleeps. That's right. Um, yeah, so that's all the mailbag that we have. Do you want to get into uh, NFL quick hitters? I do. Terribly. I do, I do terribly. You got, a, you got a good sound for me today? Sound? Yeah. Like oh. Hell yeah, I do. Okay, good. Bye. You might want to get that ready. Um, it says... Uh, well, Greg Roman's the first topic. Greg Roman. <laughs> uh, Greg Roman, like, I don't know if reports... I don't know what... To me, all year, he's been a viable candidate for a head coaching job somewhere. I mean, like, the physicality, the scheme that he's going to bring to a team, the identity, it'd be huge. Uh and also, it creates a little domino effect. People are going to come calling. And if he leaves, the Lamar domino effect. I'm not saying he's not going to be great. He just might, might not be the same guy. And there might be a transition. That domino effect could open things up for the Steelers in that division. Because with that defense, if they can keep it going the way that, you know, and Lamar doesn't have Greg, that's a little bit of an equalizer. Ben comes back healthy. We'll see. I think he ends up in Jacksonville if he ends up anywhere. Greg Roman. He could go a few places. But imagine him in Jacksonville with a budget Mariota. Minshew to develop. The money is good there with, uh, with Mariota. It's not going to be a big market. And uh, I think they could implement that same system and see what, see what happens. Who is in most need of a home playoff game? Uh, well, it's not Kansas City, surprisingly. As much as you think about Arrowhead, uh, they're only 4-3 and three at home this year. And defense travels. All of a sudden, they're a great defensive team. Um, so they're 7-1 and one on the road on the year, which is cool. They got the New England monkey off their back. Uh, but the playoff, the playoff win up there is going to be looming large. It was amazing that New England could be in the AFC Championship, all things considered, with one win over a team they've historically owned. And it felt like it was slipping from them in the second half when they beat them up there. So Green Bay, though, 7-1 and at home, 5-2 and on the road. I really think they need home field advantage. One was San Francisco, one of their lo- road losses. They don't want to go there. Uh, the Pack could get a bye with a win, and they could clinch home field advantage. Uh, with a win in San Francisco loss. So two teams that are locked up, Vikings and Buffalo slotted at five and six. Beast mode is back. Love this. Uh, one of my favorite players of all time. I should have added him to the, to the list there. Let me put that in corrections. But uh, I, I think you can give them some, some juice, if nothing but a real lift. Like Charlton Heston was in this movie where they just put him on the horse. He had to decide, I, I'm going to fuck this up. Do you remember this movie, Stace? Die so, hard. No. Charlton Heston was in some movie where he died. He got hit with an arrow. And they just put him on the horse. And they just, he just went out there. Was it Spartacus? Last of the Mohicans. Not Last of the Mohicans. You just get Apocalypto. <laughs> Any movie with a horse, this is the... But anyways, this is what... You have 11 even, seconds. Even if, they, even if he's not good for them, I think he's going to give them a lift. That first down up there, that first first down he gets, I just want to see it. It's going to be electric. And he's not a guy that seems like a workout guy to me. He seems like the athlete that Hold can up. just show up and make things happen. Weirdest week 17 send-offs. Yeah, Fitzgerald um, playing in a meaningless game in his 250th game. He could be done. I don't think he should be. He's still playing at such a high level. Uh Witten and Olsen, two tight ends, right? Really unceremonious send-offs, especially with Dallas probably not making the playoffs. Uh, and then, you know, Witten's probably not going to have anything to go to now because he can't get back in the booth. That's the reason he came back and played. I get into a booth. Uh, he can get into a booth, but he's not going to get it. I mean, it's going to be a tough road. Now, Greg Olsen, on the other hand, who's had a terrific career. 
might be done. He's probably done. And he could slide right into a booth. So I'll keep an eye on those two, uh, those two right there. Are we doing this next one? Yeah. Um, Antonio we, Brown. Oh, yeah. Let's, uh, can we roll the element? Is that going to count into uh, my time? I just want to show people this, um, this clip of Antonio Brown. I don't know. I, I have zero context. It looks like he's dancing at, uh, in a music video in a rented, in a rented mansion with a guitar. Where is he from? I have no idea. I have no idea what he's doing. And there's like the most important part is there like seven or eight. Well, scantily, scantily clad, quote unquote, babes in the back. So I don't know what's going on there. I never know what's going on with him. Uh, yeah, A B. The Saints' only risk that they assume is court of public opinion, right? Which could be severe. You know, depending on what continues to be uncovered and what he does down the line here, because I do think he's still, you know, he, he's he's still kind of off the rails and. The Saints, though, they assume zero risk on the field. That's the key there. Um, you know, if you pick somebody up in the playoffs and the league takes action and scoops him and he can't play for you, you're not on the hook for the paycheck in the playoffs. What up? What? That means you're done with your quick hitter. You counted the, the video in there? I gave you a five-second grace period. Hmm. Seems weird to tweet that, that, that picture of the waiver, though. Very on-brand. Yes, indeed. So, Goodell would probably put him on the ex- exempt list ASAP anyways, but you can imagine how scary it would be if they had uh, somebody stretch the field like that. T.O. Snub. Yeah, just weird. He was in that, uh, you know, that, that entire... We continue to give these lists more credence than we should. Not credence, would that be the right word? Yeah. We, we give it more credence than we should. I mean, it's just like the Pro Bowl. It's like, it's only going to matter as much as you scream about it, and here I am screaming about it, but T.O. absolutely should have been on the list. Every time I've spoken to T.O., he is the coolest fucking dude, and I haven't heard too many bad things like in person uh, about him as a teammate. I know he's had his baggage with the media, and I wasn't like I didn't think he got the Hall of Fame thing right. As much as I love him, I can disagree. But he's on that. He's not on that list because of the media relationship. That's it. And Marvin Harrison's on that list. That's all I'll say. Good idea. Exactly. Did you find out why? Big fan of Marvin Harrison. Yeah. But- <laughs> Dallas sucks. I did find out why Dallas sucks. I think I found out. There's a few things that they're doing really bad, okay? Uh, They are um, last in drops. Wouldn't that be probably most in drops? Well, last in the league in drop passes. I'm just... How uh, would you do that? How do you say that? Most drops. Most drops in the league. Uh, Field position, 31st. Uh, Interceptions tied for last. Missed field goals last. So those are things they do really bad. They have the best point differential and uh, yardage differential at 82 and 1,426, respectively, of any sub-500 team in the Super Bowl era. They're 0-5 in games decided by seven points or fewer, and that's a Jason Garrett problem. So what you're seeing here, field position, drops, interceptions, turnovers, missed field goals, and close ball game game management, that's all coaching. Alrighty. Those are quick hitters. Yeah, is that it? No, yeah, 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 yeah. And I want to do something real quick where there's a ton of meaningless games this weekend. I want to talk about the most meaningless games. You want a shot clock on them? Yeah, let's do a shot clock on them. Keep me to a minute. Okay. Um, Cleveland Cincy. Cleveland Cincy. Well, I want to watch it because it's like watching a train wreck. You can't, you can't take your eyes away. I want to see what happens. Cleveland at one point had a chance to be 8-8, eight and eight, uh, which would be actually, all things considered this year, a big victory. It'd be their first 500 year in quite some time, right? Last year they went 7-8-1, and one, I think. Mm. Uh, anyways, they are 0-9 in Week 17 games since 2010. And I want to see nice stat. if people are going to be on the come-get-me train indiscriminately. I can understand why Jarvis Landry allegedly would scream that at the sidelines in Arizona. Phoenix is a nice place. They look like they're getting better. Nothing against Cincinnati, but Cleveland to Cincinnati is a lateral move. So if we see any come get me on Sunday, it's going to be a really bad sign. And the Bengals, watch them lose the number one pick. Are you going to be willing to say, what did you just say? 
Bengals, watch them lose the number one pick. They can't. They're locked in. Are they locked in? Yeah. Would wow. you? Would you? Are you willing to say uh, whether or not you would retain Freddie Kitchens or not? I would not. Okay. Chiefs, Chargers. Chiefs, Chargers. Um, so the interesting thing is the Chiefs need a, a win. So they're going to play hard, right? Uh, they've, they've won like 21 of the last 23 d- division games. I don't see them having a problem here. It's going to be Rivers' last game. And it's in L.A., right? The game is in Kansas City. Okay, good. Because you might as well go on the road and not go on the road at home. Because that's essentially what happens at the Ticket City Center or whatever the fuck. Is it StubHub Center or Ticket City Center? It's Dignity Sports Health or Jeez. something. And it's yeah. ironic because you can't have any dignity in that building. Nah. You got to go silent count at home. That's no way to send off Phillip Rivers. Since week 11, the Chiefs are giving up 9.6 points per game. That's the best in the NFL. And I guess the question now is, do they have the best defense on a good team? I'm not counting the Steelers. Good question. Where were you on that, DVOA? Dignity Health Sports Park. By the way, great job, Spags. This might be Spags' best job, including the Giants years. Go Giants. Pats, Dolphins. Pats, Dolphins. Uh, Pats, they, uh, they can't rest their starters because the game they have to pay attention to is Kansas City. They played at the same time. Uh, it's one of those awkward things that you kind of wish the Kansas City game was 1 o'clock, and if you're a Pats fan, you wish you could play a 4. But so, that, that's how the NFL flexes things, so yep, you can't. Yep. So, anyways. Can't know. So, anyways, I think that's three seconds off. <laughs> so, so, anyways, I, I just think it's going to be interesting because the Pats, they want to rest people, but they want to work things that they'll do in the playoffs. And this is the most work they've had week 17 ever in my opinion. I mean, they got the lowest uh, points per game, lowest yardage uh, per game, lowest pass yards per game in, Bill, in the Bill era. Um, and so you're going to see a lot of Harry, I think. You're going to see them trying to force the run game. You know, whatever you see, that's probably what they're trying to work on for the playoffs. But they're in a position where they're like, ah, oh, we don't want to show our hand too much. So how much of it is smoke and mirrors and how much of it is stuff they're going to really ah, do in the playoffs? What's time wrong? up. Damn. So Fitzpatrick won Offensive uh, Player of the Week last week. Okay. Brady hadn't done that since 17. Rivers hadn't done that since 18. I am in no way arguing that he's better than them at this point in his career. But the gap has closed, like, a little bit. And it's interesting that he's aged pretty decently relative to some of these better quarterbacks. He's the only guy to throw for, uh, I think it's four touchdowns on five different teams, ever. So I ask you... Of playoff teams, who would you trade a quarterback for for Fitzpatrick? Oh golly, um, none of them. Steelers? You wouldn't put them on the Steelers? Yes, I would, but I don't know if they're making the playoffs. Steelers might win a playoff game if they 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 probably win. I like I like the Steelers if they have Fitz, Fitzpatrick right now. Fitz or Tannehill? Oh, Tannehill. So it's really Fitz or Cousins. Yeah, I'd probably take, at this point, the way... If Dalvin Cook is out, I'd rather have Fitzpatrick because, as you could see on Monday night... That was rough. Kirk Cousins, and I said this at the beginning of the year, with the team that they build around Kirk Cousins, I have people like, see, I told you about Kirk Cousins. I'm like, you didn't tell me anything. I told you, if they're healthy and they have that that play-action pass rolling, which that's where he kills it at, and Dalvin Cook is healthy, that's the biggest thing. Forget everything you knew about Kirk Cousins. And to this point, that's been largely true. But when you, when you peel back the curtain on Kirk, who's a good, not great quarterback, he looks bad when the situation's bad and the chips are down. And Fitzpatrick has a PhD in winning on shitty teams. I would put Fitzpatrick in Minnesota with all the injuries and that O-line over, our, over Kirk Cousins. And Fitz just won Dolphins MVP. Good, good for him. Shout out Devontae Parker as well. Yeah. Runner up, I would hope. Uh, well, he can't catch the ball if he's got no one to throw him to. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of an argument against your MVP. Green Bay. Yeah. Detroit basketball. Oh, Green Bay. Uh, that's a game that I will not be watching. But if you were watching it, Galladay, who's a Pro Bowl snub, he leads the league in touchdown catches with 11, I well, think. Well, but he's got to have somebody to throw it to him. It doesn't matter. Well, he doesn't have anybody to throw it to. You're strengthening my argument. He's had fucking David Blau throwing him the ball. 
He's got 11 touchdowns receiving. That is the, That will be the most in the league if it holds. And if it holds, that's the lowest touchdown league-leading number since Mel Gray in 75. Yep, I got that right. Okay. So watch Galladay. That's about, this is the only thing to watch in that game. Titans-Texans. Titans-Texans. I mean, this is one of the, the, the only, like, really impactful playoff game on both sides, and I'm really excited. I mean, it's not so much impactful, because I don't think anything, the, the Texans are, are in, right? That's right. The Texans are in, but they want to win the division, right? They, do they win the division? They, they won the division. This is the shit I, I'm, like, illiterate on the playoff seeding stuff. Yeah, more importantly, Titans win and in. Titans win and in. Uh, and that's the most important thing about my new favorite side team here, the Tennessee Titans and Ryan Tannehill. Uh, I think this is the perfect week for them to get Henry back. They could have used him last week. Uh, certainly when they got to the lead, they could have used him. And two weeks ago, he wasn't healthy. So we'll see how healthy he is. Titans number one in the red zone uh, offensively in touchdown percentage and Texans worse in the red zone. And by the way, that game swung on a big red zone play two weeks ago. If you remember that fumble at the goal line, that's a 14-point swing, I think, because I think they scored on that, on that possession. So one thing about Tannehill is, in the history of the, the league, only two quarterbacks have thrown for 70% completion and a 9.0 or greater yards per attempt. Those guys, famous dudes. Ball and Montana. So is that a meaningless stat? Or is Tannehill that fucking good? I don't know. Texans most likely will host the Bills as the four. Okay. There's a chance they could move up to the three and face the six, but a lot would need to happen. In that case, though, they'd be playing the same team again, wouldn't they? Because the Titans would be the six. Potentially, but it could also, yeah, the six. How about three? Playing? The six could be Pittsburgh, Tennessee, or Oakland. But imagine it's Tennessee. It's not going to be Oakland. Imagine it's Tennessee. You play a division rival three times in a month. Yeah. That's crazy. That is wild. They don't want that. Baltimore, Pittsburgh. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see that because, one, I want to watch RG3. He's a guy that I think... RG3 is a guy that I, I thought court of public opinion on him early was, man, this is excited, exciting. And then eventually people got tired of him and disliked him. And now they love him again because he's on the Ravens. And he's been so classy. He's kind of a success story as far as like, you know, accepting his role as a backup quarterback, being a mentor, you know, coming in, playing pretty well when he's in. I want to see him play. I also want to see what uh, what Baltimore's going to do with their division rival because you think they'd probably want to see them, right? Yeah. So you probably want to let them win. You probably don't want to see Tennessee, right? Because Tennessee needs Baltimore to beat Pittsburgh and win. Right? But you're talking about Ravens' perspective? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you can't control the wild card round. No, you can't you're control that. Who would but be you in. Don't, you don't, you'd rather let Pittsburgh in the playoffs than Tennessee in the Agreed. playoffs. Agreed. Right? Yes. Would, you would agree with me on that, unless Pittsburgh had its magic. That's right, which is unlikely to happen. Yeah. Bucks falcons uh, Jameis, I want to see him become the first 30... 30-30 quarterback in the history of the NFL. Who doesn't? I mean, the other day, feels like the other day, the game, I mean, it was just out of control. Just the, I want his conscience. Like, Just do it. Just do it. Nike, perfect. Yep. Shout out to you with that ad idea. Thank you. Um, he's at 31-28 right now. I think he gets there. Two picks, easy. Okay, you're going to use the rest of your 36 seconds on Bucks falcons Hey, hammer the Falcons, folks. Hammer the Falcons, huh? Heck yeah. You like that? Five I might hammer them right now. Five and two in their last seven. Dan Quinn's coming back. They're healthy. Yeah, they are five and two in their last seven. That's pretty good there. Yeah. Uh, it, and there was another game, too, uh, that I wanted to see, and there was a reason, I promise. But um, listen, they, oh, yeah, I want to see Carolina. I want to see Carolina because McCaffrey needs like 200-something yards from scrimmage to pass Chris Johnson uh, right. for the scrimmage yardage re- record. And then he, he also needs 67 receiving yards to be the third player in NFL history with 1,000 yards rushing, 1,000 yards receiving in a single uh, season. Marshall, Marshall Falk is one of those guys. Yeah. Uh, difficult to do since the team has quit, but 
may be easier to do since every play is Christian McCaffrey. Exactly. Runner This catch. is the best thing for him to break a record because that's all you have to play for. Just get it to him. Have a special day. Do we have anything else to do? Yeah, we got, the, we got to finish out our quarterback draft. We got to finish our quarterback draft. Let's run through that. Okay. You want my roster as it currently sits? Yeah, let's, let's update it. I took Mahomes at one, Rodgers at four, Watson at five, Breeze at eight, Dak Prescott at nine. You went Lamar. You went Russ at two. Russ at two. Lamar, Lamar at three. three. At six, you went Kyler Murray. At seven, you went Carson Wentz. Mm -hmm. At 10, you went Matt Stafford. And at 11, you just went Sam Darnold. Did you like that pick? I did. Okay. We're going to 20. Uh, at, at 12, I'm taking Tom Brady. Okay. I'd rather not be the first to be right on that uh, decline. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll stay on the train until I, I see it for sure. Got you. And uh, at 13, I'm going to take Jim Garoppolo out nice. there in San Francisco. Nice. And I already took Kyler Mur Murray pretty high, huh? Six, yep. Yeah. I can't believe I've let this guy slide this far Ooh, down. Ooh, nice. Okay. Matty Ice. Yeah. You know? Uh, and since Brady's off the board, I am going to go with... It's getting, the other guy in the AFC East. It's getting tougher. Josh Allen. Okay, yeah. Tremendous upside. Yeah. Now that's a heck of a pick. He was uh, highest rated on my big board right there. Um, this is tough. Again, we're talking about quarterbacks we would take for the 2020 season, saying that the situation is optimized. Who do you want leading your club? Yep. And with the 16th overall pick, <laughs> yikes. Um, Again, within, uh, with a good setup, okay. Am I really going to do this? No, nah, I don't think I can do this. What you going to do? I'm thinking about... You don't take him, I will. No, uh, it's, it, it, this guy's not going to be on your board, I don't think. Okay. Um, I'm doing it. Darn it, Kirk Cousins, and it feels awful. I'm glad you did it. Uh, Didn't want to do it. I know. I know. Okay, that's 16. Uh, and at 17, I'm, I'm sticking with the old guard. And, and I'll go uh, Phil Rivers for one more trip around the block. Philip Rivers. Nice. <laughs> and these are your last two picks at 18 and 19. Really? Yeah. Golly. You're telling me. I'm really thinking about Teddy Bridgewater, but I'm not going to mm, do it. Great thought. Because I'm really afraid. I think anything, I mean, this was an amazing run this year for him. Ah, oh, fuck. A nice thought. It is a nice thought. I'm going to go what about with... your guy, Jacoby? I'm not going to go with Jacoby. Have we taken Derek Carr yet? We have not. And we've taken Dak Prescott, obviously. Yep. It's a shame we, uh, we drafted this last week before uh, Carson Wentz just set the league on fire again in the fourth quarter. I might have taken him higher. You got him seventh overall. Uh-huh. I like Jameis Winston here. Okay. Now this for entertainment <laughs> I'm a value. gambler. I'm a gambler. I like... I, it's tantalizing. And then I'm going to take... You should have saved tantalizing for Tantahill. Yeah. That's so bad. I guess, I guess, like, when I'm looking at young guys, you've got Haskins, you've got, you've got... Dimes. You've got Dimes, and you've got Locke. I'm going to take a flyer on Locke. Okay. How's that? I like it. A um, couple names. This is the last pick, 20th overall. Mm -hmm. A few big names still out there, mm -hmm. literally. Bear Goff. Big Ben. I'm not going to take him. Yeah, we can't. He's, he's, you don't know. Baker Mayfield. Jared Goff. Cam Newton. Injuries. I'm not taking any injured players right now. But I will say this. Had we been taking injured players, and we talked about it earlier in the show, the domino effect, not only just if Greg Roman departs Baltimore, it completely changes the landscape of how you would pick Lamar. It also changes how you would pick Big Ben. 
Um, and, and if we're assuming Ben is healthy, he's got to be up there, especially with the defense they have. Now, the framework with which we are selecting this list is not exact. But if he has that defense, he's a top 7-8 guy for sure if we're taking injured players. Yeah, okay. Uh, and with that said, the 20th and final pick uh, is going to be a bounce back year for one, <sighs> for one Baker Mayfield. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So we left off Goff. Yep. We left off Brissett. Yep. We left off Trubisky, Andy Dalton. Danny Dimes. Haskins. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick. Jacoby Brissett. Yeah, we left off a lot of cats. Derek Carr, did you say that? No, we, we left off Carr. Carr hadn't thrown for 300 yards all year. Yeah. And you thought that Gruden thing would breathe some life into him. I, listen, there's still some good players here, and that just goes to show you quarterback, uh, it's, it's more of a crowded group than you think. And, and there's a lot more confusion, especially in the, in, in the middle than you think. I mean, it's almost getting, is it getting deeper? I don't know. We, we struggled there after about 15. Yeah, but there's a few guys here that you're like, I mean, the fact that you can take Tom Brady. It's about the situation. In the middle 10. Yeah, he went 12. It's just an interesting time. Yeah. This is a time where it's the hardest to pick this. Because you have the crop going out, and you have the crop coming up, and then you have some guys in the middle who you're just not sure of. Their car would be one. Um, you know, and Andy Dalton, where does he end up next year? Is he a top 20 quarterback in the right si- situation? I think maybe. But what's the optimal situation for him, and does he get there? So uh, that was a very important list. It was. A lot of people are going to be into that list. We'll, we'll publish that somewhere. We're going to do a graphic. We're going to put that online like the big TV people do. Nice. Uh, so that was uh, that was it. Yeah. Well, I want to hear your uh, score predictions for the college football playoff semifinals. I want you to go first. Okay. Um, first game of the day is LSU Oklahoma. If I'm not mis- not mistaken. <laughs> uh, I got. If that. I recall correctly. If uh, have do you have your scores written down? No. Because I, I haven't even you picked to, it. So you're just gonna. I know what I think the the, the differential is going to be. Okay. I've got two pretty similar scores. You want yeah. me to just give you both of them? Yeah. LSU Tigers. Well, let's go one at, one at a time. LSU Tigers, 45. Oklahoma Sooners, 20. Ooh. I think it's going to be tighter than that. I only think it's going to be tighter than that because I think LSU struggles, not defensively in general, but like when they are up big. Their two-minute, you know, kind of tempo defense. Not as great. I remember the old Miss game. Everybody was freaking out. I'm not saying that's a reason that you got to worry about them down the line. They'll be in a lot of games that are in phase. Both those games. Well, the first one's going to be the first one's going to be a blowout earlier, I think. And and I think I actually think Oklahoma's going to cover. So I'm going to go 43 to 31. Now okay. it's going to be a three touchdown game at one point. Okay. Um, and that is the early game. That's the four o'clock game. The and that is our uh, Peach Bowl. Nice. Our eight o'clock game is our Fiesta Bowl. Yeah. I'm not using our uh, Fiesta our means sponsors. party. Oh. In Spanish. Cool. Maybe you should go party bowl. <laughs> Maybe you, you should go. What if, what if they just changed the name? Well, they should. You think? Yeah. Party bowl. Peach bowl. Get rid of these corporate sponsors. Yeah. You want to go first? Clemson, Ohio State. Clemson, Ohio State. All right. I will. Clemson Tigers, 41. Ohio State Buckeyes, 20. I got two blowouts in the semis. Yeah, I'll go 37-24 Clemson. Okay. God, these games are going to suck. Well, we say that they might, so they probably won't. Okay, well, that'd be great. I would love to be wrong. And I will... uh, See, in see Florida. you at the Orange Bowl. Yeah, at the Orange Bowl, which our favorite team's playing in. Yep. That's a New Year's Six Bowl. Go Virginia. Go Virginia. Go Hoos. Um, and we're going to try to take a stab at a pod next week. Let's do it. Tuesday? Sounds great. Record Tuesday, out Wednesday. Okay. And by then, well, when's the game? Monday. 
gonna be tough. Boy, that's gonna be rough. You're gonna need to stay tuned to your uh, social feeds to see whether or not a pod is coming. Yeah, just just be on the lookout. I know everybody. They say like with podcasts, you got to be regular and predictable. But at Chalk Network, at Joel Nine One, yep, at McCon Gunter, yep, everywhere. Yeah, y'all take care. Peace. I'm going down to warmer weather where I, don't, I won't need this puffy vest. <laughs>